Today I'm going to take this ordinary jewel thief and I'm going to turn it into a tunable jewel thief. And I'll go through, uh, go through that in a little bit. Um, but for those of you who are not familiar, here's the battery. Typically the battery is too low a voltage to drive a, a light bulb like this. And this battery is like 1.2 volts and this takes about 1.8 volts to light this. So uh, battery runs over here to the negative on the uh, transistor, which is the emitter. Uh, this side is the collector. It's the positive side of the transistor. It goes over to the right side of the coil. Uh, here's the base. That's the thing that turns the transistor on and off. It goes over to the left side of the coil. And then finally, the uh, power, the positive power, goes to the center tap of the coil. And so what we're going to do is we're going to replace this coil with a different type of inductor that we can change the inductance on and run some experiments. So what I've done is I have replaced this coil with this coil and as you can see there's three taps on this the right side the center and the left side and on this I've got the same thing I've got a tap over here on the left side I've got a tap over here on the right side and then I've got a center tap which I can move and that's the benefit over this is I can experiment by changing where I tap these. I can move the white wire up here and the yellow wire and I can change the total number of windings. I can change the ratio of the windings from the right side to the left side and do anything I want that way. So let's take a look at what happens when we change those ratios. So let's take a look and see what happens to the uh, brightness of our LED when we move the center tap around. We're starting these are in groups of 20, as I said earlier, so we have 20, 40, 60 on this side, and here on this side we have 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. So we have a ratio of about uh, 60 to 120, or 2 to 1. So let's move it so it's more like closer to 50, 50. That's not quite 50, 50, but eh, the bulb is still roughly the same. Move it a little bit more towards the left. Now to me it's a little bit dimmer. And go more to the left. Definitely dimmer. Absolutely dimmer. And when I get here, nothing. Won't light up. So it's not even oscillating. How about when I go back the other way? That's yeah, a about as bright as originally was and a little bit dimmer than the last setting. So somewhere out in here my ratio of the collector side to the base side is uh, is better for uh, lighting up the bulb. And let's, uh, let's take another experiment along these lines. This time around I've set up my voltmeter back here so you can see what it's reading and what I'm doing is I'm measuring over here. You can see the black and the red connectors. They go to the uh, voltmeter back here. So on this tap I'm getting roughly 1.5 volts, call it. Let's skip over a couple and see what happens. Uh, now I'm getting 4.4 volts and the LED is definitely brighter. Skip over another couple. Getting 4.5 volts. Another couple. Whoa, it's just barely lit. I can barely see it. I don't know if you can see that. No, nope. just barely lit. Uh, okay, and back here I'm getting 3.2 volts, which is kind of interesting. My guess is the current fell off, but we're only measuring voltage. So if we go back here, 4.4 goes down to 0 0.5. Nope, nope, had not have a good connection. 4.1 bulbs very bright. 4.5, a little bit, a little bit more than 4.5, 4.7. 
So right in here is about our maximum voltage down to the LED. And then you can see what the ratio is here. 20, 40, 60, 80 on this side. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 on this side. So this ratio in this particular setup with this particular transistor is giving us the best output voltage uh, at that ratio. Now I've hooked up my voltmeter to read amps, milliamps to be exact, and hook the probe in. So one of my probes is hooked to the positive of the battery. And the other one I will use to uh, tap the uh, center. Now the, the resistance of the meter is going to affect, greatly affect the brightness of the uh, LED and the ability to resonate, but we'll, we'll go ahead and take a look and see what happens. So at the first tap I'm getting 29.6 and the bulb is not really lighting, so more like a dead short, or more like a short through there. Nothing on the second tap. On the third tap I'm starting to get the bulb is on, you can see it over here. And I'm showing about 27 milliamps. Uh, next tap to the left, I'm getting 26 milliamps. The bulb's not quite as bright. And the next tap, the uh, bulb is just barely on. 25 milliamps. And after this, it's probably not going to light up. No, nope, not getting anything. 23 milliamps. So, the uh, as I move outside this range over here and over here where the bulb doesn't want to light, most of my energy is being wasted. It's uh, not resonating nicely. So, this little experiment will tell me uh, the optimal number of windings on both sides and where I'm uh, getting the most bang for the current buck. So there's another experiment we can run. Let's run one more experiment and see what we can do to change the frequency. If you're interested in in uh, oscillators, which is what this is, is a flyback oscillator, and you want to use uh, experiment with oscillators, uh, here's another interesting thing you can do. Now the meter is set up to read uh, hertz, and it's auto-ranging. It'll mostly run to the kilohertz. So I've got one probe attached over here to this side, and I can touch almost any of these taps and get the same reading, but over here I'm getting 23 kilohertz. Let's see what happens when we move the probe, uh, the uh, center tap over to another one. And over here I'm getting about 14 kilohertz. Get my hand out of the way. Yeah, 13.9. It varies. I need to get my hand in a better position. Uh, 14.6. So most of these, you'll see that most of these taps will read the same. So 14.3, 14 14.2, something like that. Okay, so I can vary the uh, frequency of it by doing this. And also, let's see what happens when we change the side taps and see what we get. There we have kind of a feeble light. But uh, now we're getting 40 kilohertz. Can you see that back there? 41 kilohertz. So I can experiment by changing these positions of these taps. Center tap, the side taps, the total number of turns in the coil, the ratio between the left and right sides, and so on. So this is a nice experimental jig for, for doing many, many different types of tests. Uh, see what you can get, uh, how well you can tune the brightness of the bulb, uh, how much current you're using, how much voltage you're using, and frequency. Let me show you one last setup, and I think you'll, it'll make you smile. And here's the final setup. I hope you find it amusing. This is a crystal radio. As you can see, I'm using the coil back here. That's my variable inductor. And I can vary the uh, inductance across here. And you can also, if you're very quiet,
Can you hear that whistling? You can actually hear this whistling down here. Okay, some different ideas on experimenting with variable inductors and tunable jewel thieves. Well, I hope you found it interesting and useful in your in your jewel thief experiments and perhaps you'll go on to oscillators and other type of interesting electronics. Thanks for watching.